Hey everybody, today Rado runs through St. Petersburg 2nd Edition. That's right folks, I've already done a run through in the past for the original St. Petersburg, but uh, last year, 2014, a new upgraded, revamped, um, shiny fancy new version came out with a bunch of new content added. And since it's uh, going to be released, uh, it was released in 2014 in German and in 2015 it's going to be released in English, I figured I might as well do a run through so folks can decide, you know, if they're on the fence, well, should I get the original, should I get the new one, if I have the original, should I upgrade to the new one? What should I do? What should I do? Well, uh, say no more. Let's find out. Although, I should say right up front, in case you are watching this run-through and you don't know anything about St. Petersburg, bear in mind, I'm all, I'm going to be doing a run-through as if you do. So if you don't know how to play the base game, you might want to watch the run-through I've done for the original St. Petersburg. There's a link for it right there on the screen. You can go learn that and then this run-through will make sense because I'm just going to assume you are already a St. Pete expert. So if you want to watch that original run-through, you can do that in 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, you're still here? Right then. Let's find out what's in the box. Okay, so St. Petersburg 2.0 adds a whole bunch of stuff. Well, actually, I should say, first of all, it adds a completely revamped art style. Now, that, the art style, I'm not really going to talk to you too much about right now. Obviously, um, you know, there's the original classic type that was very much inspired by 17th century Russian art styles. Uh, what is it called? The Persona style or the Persona, something like that. And a lot of people didn't like it. Me and Jen, we think it's actually really cool. I think it, you know, it's very, very uh, atmospheric and captures the time well. But some people didn't like it. So the art has been completely revamped. The graphic design has been revamped. And uh, so that's up to you whether you like one or the other. But uh, that's all I'm going to say about the art. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. There are basically seven things that have, seven expansions have effectively been added to St. Petersburg in the 2.0. Now, um, first of all, the two expansions that were made available for St. Petersburg, the uh, New Banquets and, oh, what's it called? Or New Society and Banquet, both of those are now available in, in the uh, expanded game. So that's two of the seven things. And then as well in the expanded game, there are obstacles, there are assistants, there are objectives, there are um, events, and arguably, most importantly, there is the market, which is a whole new stack of cards and a whole new section of the board. So in the original game, there were only there's only the green, blue, red, and upgrade cards. Now there is a fifth type of card, which is nice because the game actually now supports five players instead of four. Now you could get an upgrade for St. Petersburg that would expand it to five, but it did it in a completely different way. The new St. Petersburg 2.0 increases to five player count by adding a fifth type of card, the market. And and so I'm going to demonstrate now how the market works, and I'm also going to demonstrate how the obstacles work, how the assistants work. I'm going to try and demonstrate all this new stuff. And I'm doing that because I just basically just spent 20 minutes doing playing a two-player game by myself, making it up to round three. We are just about to finish the worker phase of round three. There's only one more worker to buy, and it's my turn. I'm going to buy that guy. And then, after we're done with that and we um, you know, score it like normally, instead of moving on to buildings, we're going to move on to markets so you get to see a whole bunch of new stuff. But let's finish the market phase first. Uh, let's see. I, I, I actually am going to buy this last uh, sheep herder. It cost me five, but minus one is four because I already had one. So there goes four bucks. Boop. Boop. All right, so that was nice. Although, actually, you know what? I'm going to demonstrate something else, too. The, you notice um, in my hand, remember how you can hold up to three cards in your hand? I have two cards in my hand, this uh, accountant and this black market guy. Now, you'll notice this is a purple card. Purple cards are a new type of card that have been seeded into some of the decks. They don't cost anything, and when you take them into your hand, you can use them on a subsequent turn to do their special power. The black market special power, anytime I want on, on some future turn, and I could do it right now, I can dig through the discard pile and buy a card card from there. Let's see, and now do I have enough money? I think I do. Yes, I do. Good, good. Okay. So, I am going to, before my turn is over, actually you have to do this I think at the beginning of your turn, before I bought this sheep herder, I'm going to use my um, black market card, and that lets me buy anything I want from the discard pile, and let's see, where is it? It was back, yeah, here we go. The, um, the czar, the czar card. Arp, ah. Cards hard with one hand. There we go. So I'm going to buy that. Now this actually came out in the first round, but or I'm sorry, not the first round, um, but the second round. Eight bucks was a bit much. Uh, nobody bought it. It got discarded. 
And so now I'm going to buy it thanks to my black market card. Beep, beep, beep. So that's eight. And now there is a very important reason I'm buying that. Um, and oh, now I'm almost broke. I'm down to three bucks. But that's okay because now we make our income. Hooray! I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's 21 bucks for me. 10, 21, and I think Jen has seven as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, Jen also makes 21 bucks. So we are in the money. We're in the money. We've got a lot of what it takes to get around. Although Jen's a bit more in the money than I am. All right, so, and now this ends like normal, but I demonstrated one of the new, these purple cards, which is a new type of card you could have gotten in the in expansion of the base game or it's part of the new game. Now, time to move on to the market, what everybody's been waiting for. Like always, you gotta fill out. And you'll notice, by the way, there are 10 slots now instead of eight, like the original game. That is, again, to make sure the game can support up to five players, because there's just a lot more cards available all the time. Let's see, and since we uh, completely bought out um, a lot of workers, there's a lot of market cards here. And let's see, Jen's got the market mark. You can see there's actually five wooden things now instead of four. So Jen gets to buy first. Which, if any of these, is she going to buy? Well, we just made a lot of money, so I think we are going to compete um, to try to gain dominance on the market before we score it. Now, this is a snapshot of where we are right now. Current, there's five types of produce. Chickens, uh, corn, apples, fish, and cabbage. And I'm the king of cabbage, because you can see I'm on the track for cabbage. Jen isn't. Jen loves her fish. I haven't gotten any fish yet. We're tied on apples. Uh, Jen's in the lead on corn, and I'm in the lead on chickens. And now that's because, if you look at the stuff we bought in the fast, I've gotten two buildings, both of which, you'll notice um, in, the, in the original game, the marketplace did not have a chicken on it. But a lot of cards now have these produce uh, icons on it. And since I've got these two chickens on previous cards I've gotten in previous rounds, when, as soon as I got these cards, my chicken fortunes climbed. And let's see, I also got this cabbage and this... Uh, this sack of corn, and in a previous turn, I bought an apple as well. And so that's how I am on these, but I've never gotten any fish income or any, any fish cards. Jen, meanwhile, her shipmen, you know, her, her shipmakers, that got her fish, apples, corn. And in the previous turn, she bought a double fish, fish, uh, fish fang, and a double corn, and a single chicken. And, you know, these cards all generate income, and they got her on the market. And so that's where we are right now. And we are vying to be in control of this because when we score the market, each one of these five categories will be checked individually. And whoever is in the lead in, in round three will score three points. Whoever's in second place will score one point. But it gets better. In round four, whoever's in the lead scores four. Second place is two. And then five and two. And then finally, from the sixth round on until the end of the game, the leader of every one of these columns scores six points and second place scores three. So there is a ton a ton of points to be had for trying to dominate the market. And so, Jen, I think we're going to try that right now. Let's see. Jen can see I am the king of cabbage. She doesn't like the sound of that. I think she's going to spend four bucks. Take ten. Get six change. And she, of course, my money should be hidden and all that, but I'm just not going to bother with that. All right. She's going to buy this double cabbage or lettuce. And so it comes over here with her other stuff. It's got income and... Boop, boop. Now, she is in the lead. If I don't take it back from her, she'll score three points. I'm going to score one. All right, and now I get to buy some something. I could just return the favor and buy a single cabbage, which gives me two income and will tie us up. But then there's another cabbage right here. Let's see. Now, if I really wanted to, you know, completely wipe her out, I could get this one, which only costs one, and this increases my cabbage by four. But these cards are special, these kind of bushel cards, because they have an upkeep cost that you have to pay moving forward. And so that's really interesting. Oh, crap, though. I just realized. I forgot. The, the czar, when I got him, you notice he has a produce space here as well, and it's a question mark. When I got him, I got to permanently program him to be producing one produce of my choice. Let's see, which one do I want to do? You know what? I, since I hadn't seen these cards out, I figure I will have chosen chicken. So he is the chicken czar. Now I put this on here. Oops, not, sorry, not this one. I take the chicken here. And so he is permanently locked in. He's increasing my chicken fortunes for the rest of the game. So I'm actually two ahead of Jen on chicken. I forgot to do that. Um, and you can see, um, there are some other cards that have question marks on them too that you might buy, but chicken can never be assigned to them ever again. Okay. So, I'm actually even more in the lead on chickens. But, do I want to take lettuce back? You know, if I buy this two, then Jen could just buy this one, and we'd be all tied up. 
Um, but, hmm, you know what, actually, currently, I am not in the running at all on fish, which means currently I'm not going to score any points for fish, so I think I'm going to spend five bucks. So here's a ten, get five change. Arr. And I'm going to grab this fish, which gives me two income, and it puts me on the fish line. So there we go. So now I'm competing for fish also. Jen's turn again. She can buy some more. Um, let's see. I think she currently we're tied on apples. So she's going to try and take that away from me. She's going to spend five. Um, or get two change because it costs her three to get this apple tree. Now, if I would have tried to get this, I wouldn't have gotten a discount because an apple tree is different than an apple. But, you know, if, if I buy multiple apples, I will get discounts on subsequent ones like every other type of card. Stupid slippery glass table. Line up correctly. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, everything's all slippery. Okay, so Jen just got this. It cost her three bucks. She paid that. Running out of space here. And her apple fortunes have increased. One, two, three. She is now the queen of apples. You know what? This shall not stand. I'm going to spend one buck and I'm going to grab a bushel of apples. Now, it only costs one buck and it increases my apple fortunes by up to by four. One, two, three, four. And I, if Jen were here, I would say, how do you like them apples? Because everybody loves good will hunting. Okay, so there we go. So I'm back in the lead. I'm in the lead on chickens and apples, but Jen's in the lead on all the others. Okay, Jen's turn again. There's still a lot of produce here to buy. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Jen, I think she's going to pay three bucks. One, two, three, because she loves chickens, IRL. So she's going to buy this chicken coop, which increases her chickens by three. Costs her three bucks. It gives no income, but one, two, three. She's back on the top. She is the cock of the walk, as it were. And now it's my turn again. And you know, I mean, like always with St. Pete, you could just go crazy making yourself broke on this, on, on this subject like anything else, but you want to save some money for later on. I mean, I really want to save some money for buying some aristocrats this turn because this round I've got the assist, my lawyer assistant, which means this round all red cards cost me one less. Jen wants to save some money for buying buildings because she's got the architect. And um, you know, as long as she's got the architect assistant, all blue cards cost one less. So we don't want to spend all our money but, let's see, so Jen just got that. Am I going to buy anything else or am I just going to... You know, I'm in the lead on... No, I'm only in the lead on one. i got to be in the lead at least on two. Or maybe just tie her up. If I, if I do this, we'll tie on... You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this. Or... No, you know, I'm going to take the cabbage. Because this, uh, it's five bucks, but it gives me two income. I like that. So I'm going to do that. Cost me five bucks. Increases me one on cabbage. And now Jen and I are tied on cabbage. Okay, which means if we stay that way, we'll both get the three points. So I basically scored two points because I was going to score one. Jen was going to score three. Now we're both scoring three. Right, now, is Jen happy with that or is she going to strike back by paying four bucks to increase her cabbage even more? All right, she's already in the lead on sacks. I don't, or, you know, now, if she knows, if she grabs this, I could grab this one, which would increase me by four, but that would start coming. You know, I think she's going to pass. I think she's happy being in the lead on two and tied on one. She's happy. Now it's my turn. Am I going to pass? You know what? I think I'm going to pass too because I want to save some money. All right, so we both passed. Now, at the end of the market phase, we go on ahead and score, like always. Although, there's something special. Because, um, well, first of all, okay, we get our income. I get six bucks off of mine. So there's five, six. Well, how's Jen doing? She gets one, two, three, four, five. Jen makes only five bucks. So I actually made more. Okay, so that's nice. But now, um, because I've got this special one that um, only cost me one buck, I have to, before we can actually score all these categories, I've got to pay upkeep on this. The upkeep of this card, or this card for that matter, is money equal to the amount of victory points we're going to score. So if I want to keep my apple bushel and keep my lead on apples, I now have to pay three bucks. So while it looked like I was doing great, I actually made six bucks. Really, I only made three bucks because, um, let's see. There, yeah, we could take. Is that right? Oh crap, I've got myself here. I put that back. Three, yes, I'm gonna pay three, there we go. So, 
I only made three bucks because I got to pay upkeep. And as long as I want to keep this super plus four Apple thing, it's going to keep costing me. Next round, it'll cost me four bucks and then five bucks and then six bucks. If I ever want to, if I ever feel like I don't need that lead because maybe I've gotten apples some other way, um, or I just don't care about staying in the lead of apples, or I don't think it's worth staying in the lead by paying all that money, I can always just discard this. It'll go to the discard pile. But for now, I'm going to keep it. And so now, since we've done that, now we get to score. Let's go from left to right. Chickens. Jen is in the lead. She scores three points. I score one. One, two, three, and one. Next up, Jen's in the lead on corn. She scores three, I score one. One, two, three, one. I'm in the lead on apples. I score three. One, two, three. Jen scores one. And now, here's where things get, do they? Yes, they do. Things are going to get interesting. Jen's in the lead. She gets three um, points for her fish. I get one. Let's do my one point. And now let's do her three. One, two, hold on. Hold on, here is another new feature of the game. Now remember, Jen has one more point coming, but for her to get that last point, she has to pass this obstacle. You may have noticed, as part of setup, one, two, three, four, five obstacle cards, obstacle slash bonus cards, were placed at 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 35 bucks, 50 bucks, and 70 bucks. Now the cards themselves are random, but they always go in those spots. And there's two cards. There's bonus cards, which means when either of us get to 35 points, the game will pause briefly, and you'll, or I should say, when a player gets to 35 points, they will score one point for every red card they have in their collection at that point. So we have a race. We want to get as many red cards as possible so we can score this bonus when we get to 35 points. And there's going to be another bonus. When we get to 70 points, we pick our highest yield upgrade card and either score all its money or all its points. So that's in the future and that's something we can plan for. But what's more interesting are these obstacles. Jen just hit this obstacle card. It's at the 20 point mark. So that means Jen has to check. She can pass this obstacle if she has four different green cards, four different ones. Now we already had an obstacle at the 10 pointer. This one was easy. When we got to 10 points, we could not score any more points above 10 unless we each had one building. And both Jen and I had a building at that point. So that was easy peasy. Although this is the only building Jen ever had, but it was the building that let her get past this obstacle. But now we have to, and so this is why, you remember I was in a rush and I used my special power to get this extra guy out because if we don't have four unique guys, we're stuck here. Now Jen, she does, she's got shipbuilders, She's got Sheep Herder, she's got Lumberjack, and she's got Hunter. Those are the four, so that means she can make it past this obstacle, and she scored her 21 points. So she's cool. Now let's score the last one. Um, we both score three points. One, two, three. So Jen's on her way towards getting bonus points off of that. And I've got the same problem. One, two, and do I get that extra point? Now, if I had not gotten this guy, I would only have three types of worker. And I'd be kind of screwed right now. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really be in trouble because as long as I only have three types of workers, it doesn't matter. You know, All the points I'm about to score for my buildings, I wouldn't score them. Until I could get another worker, I'd be stuck in the water. So it was absolutely essential I got this worker. And you know, Jen and I have known it since the beginning. We had to have at least one building by 10 points. We had to have at least four unique workers by 20 points. And we both just barely did it. It was a close one. So, but anyway, since I did do it, I made it over the top. Now, also, interestingly, I mean, so our next obstacle is over here at 50 points. When we hit 50 points, we have to have, um, these are for bonus cards, we have, or upgrade cards, we have to have a red, green, and blue upgrade card. If, if this was at 70, we'd have to have four upgrade cards, but as it is at 50, we have to have three upgrade cards, and they have to be these specific colors. Now, um, Jen's got one red upgrade card. I think I've got a blue upgrade card. So, and we've got a lot of time. Well, not a lot of time, because we're scoring points pretty quick. We need to, I mean, I need to get a red and a green upgrade card. Toot sweet. Or else I'll be in trouble when I hit this obstacle. And Jen, she's got the same concern. So that's some future planning we got to deal with. But anyway, so that's how obstacles work. They're very, very cool. Now, another thing you'll notice, the obstacle on spot 20 and 35 also has one of these objective cards on it. Now this is just a reminder that when we hit 20 and then later when we hit 35, we have to discard one of our objectives. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets um, dealt three objective cards. These were my three. Now these, these are going to be bonus points for me at the end of the game. Um, at the end of the game, I could take my highest scoring red aristocrat card and score four times its points. That's pretty nice. Or I could um, score two points for every upgrade in the game I've gotten. And of course, I'm planning on getting a lot of upgrades. 
Or I could, um, for every disc, and at this point, this is all five of them. Uh, this is 10 points because I've got a disc on every one of them. And then plus, I'd be able to score one of those discs. So, you know, those are some different long-term goals. But I started with three. When I hit 20, I have to delete, I have to remove one of them from the game. And you know what, at this point, I think I'll get rid of this one because these are both potentially really big for me, but I think this is the one I'm gonna ultimately keep because I'm, I'm gonna score really well. And as long as I get really, really high, as long as I'm in the lead at the end on one of these, I'll score six points plus um, two. For, so this is a 16 pointer guaranteed. I mean, who knows what these other ones are? So I will take that. And so now I've got two more. When I get to 35, I'll have to discard one more and then I'm down to my final. So I could change my mind later. Now, Jen, she crossed the line. She had to discard one as well. The three things she had were um, two points for every red card she had, a risk red card, um, score one of her blue cards times three, or five points plus one additional point for every four cards she's got. What's she got? What, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 right now. So if she scored this right now, this would be nine points. So Jen's gotta decide one of these she's dumping as well. And you know, I don't think she's gonna go heavy into buildings. She, she did enough buildings. She's gonna stay away from buildings. She's gonna keep these other ones because, um, but she'll have to decide later which other one she's gonna get rid of when she gets to 35 points. So. That happened, and we have now finished this round, and then we move on to the next round, buildings, and hey, there's another market stand, which I've already got to, so that's gonna be cheap for me. And by the way, this market stand, not only does it you know, increase your victory points, it'll up you on the apple tree. Uh, oh, another purple card. Let's see, and so these have come out, and Jen, I think, yep, Jen's got the, Jen is first, and I think the first thing, well, you know, Jen would like to grab this. When you get these purples, they come into your hand, and then in a future turn, you can use them. But this is one that basically lets her discard a card from her hand. And you know what? Jen and I, we are both all very, very careful about getting ourselves, falling down the trap of having too many cards in your hand. So I don't think she cares about this so much. <laughs> Let's see here. So, but Jen gets first dibs on buying. And uh, she has a toll house. So she could, or Zoll House, she could buy another one and it would only cost her seven. Plus, since she has the architect, it'll cost her six. I don't think she can turn that down. She's gonna spend six bucks, four and change, one, two, there we go, four and change, and get another Zoll House because of that sweet, sweet discount. So now she is making um, four points at the end of this round. So there we go. So that was her turn. Now, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I got, do I, yeah, I still have a lot of money. And you know you gotta love the observatory. The observatory is great. You get you know this uh, you get you either get a victory point or you get to draw a card randomly and put it in your hand. That's always very very cool. I think I want that. But before I do it, the only thing I haven't shown I've shown you guys the obstacles. I've shown you the market. I've shown you the uh, helpers because Jen just got a discount. Every at the end of every round, at the same time we hand over our wooden markers, we also hand over our assistance as well. So the only thing I haven't shown you is these events. Now at the beginning of the game, six of them are put out. Jen has already claimed one, the one that gives her six bucks and everybody else gets two bucks. You can only claim one event and then it's out of the game. So Jen has claimed her one event. I haven't claimed an event yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna claim an event. I've still got five to choose from. This one will permanently increase my hand size for the rest of the game. This one will, I can use it right now and put two more cards out on the board. And as you can see, there's two spaces. So I could, you know, get some, I could, you know, I could get some more stuff. Um, this one lets me remove something and add it if I don't like what I see. But I think I'm, you know, this one lets me buy, oh, I'm actually tempted. I'm, okay, this is a tough choice. This one would let me buy the top card and I could get my black market guy back. That would be very, very nice. This one lets me draw a card and put it on this spot. So now there are two cards to buy here. So I could buy two cards with one purchase. But here's the thing, it's a bit risky. This might be a really expensive card that I can't afford. So I don't think I'm gonna do that. I am going to use this event. Uh, so I'm gonna activate this event, choose a um, card from the uh, Ablake staple and buy it. I'm gonna buy back my black market guy, which me and you know, and he didn't even cost me anything. So now that's it. Both Jen and I have used. Um, so there's still four more events, but um, in a two-player game, only two of these events will ever happen. So these other ones are out. But if there were more players, there'd still be these other events that other people could do. So Jen and I have both done our events that, and I used it so I could get my other things. So that in the future, and now my turn can still go on. I could. I, I was thinking if I had bought this. 
Oh, it would have. I could have put this here and I would have been able to buy two cards with one action. But I'm pretty happy to have gotten my black market back instead. And so now the game continues. There's other stuff to buy. I might want to buy this toll house because otherwise Jen's probably going to buy another one and get a big discount on it. There's no way I want her to have that. I think I'll just, um, and I can't afford it, but this is my turn where I'm going to do really, really well buying red cards because I get a discount. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put this in my hand. And now I've got three cards in my hand. My hand is full. So Jen didn't get that, and now it's Jen's turn again. And of course, she can still buy the other stuff, etc., etc. But the game continues. And um, over the course of the game, the market you know, just becomes more and more. Around four, it's going to be four and two points and so on. And, um, but otherwise, we just keep on escalating in the same way that St. Petersburg has always worked. And that's it, folks. I believe I've demonstrated everything. The obstacles, the events, the assistance, the market. And I've shown you some. There's a bunch of new cards that have been seeded into all these decks. You've seen a couple of them, like uh, this one, like the purples, but there's a bunch more. But I'm gonna stop right there, and now if you want, you can go to Final Thoughts, because uh, I don't think I need to do an extended. You've seen everything there is that the new game offers. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts about all this stuff, you can hit the button in five, four, three, two, one.